City strife, horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook and sun spin, and move the horses in to the barn, then time to move them out again. Red barns, green pastures, beautiful my houses. The view I see each day when I arise. This light pleases me. It is plain to see I'm living my bucolic life. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. So, last week I made that fabulous boho hippie skirt, and today I'm going to be making a top to go along with it. So this is the pattern I'm going to use. Now I'm going to be kind of making the bodice of this, but I want the sleeves of this one, the looser sleeves, okay? So I'm going to kind of incorporate those two views. Shouldn't be a problem. And the fabric I'm going to be using is more of this rose fabric, which is 100% cotton, calico weight, and I have already pre-washed, pre-dried, very hot temperature, so it should be shrunk in. Um, this pattern does call from some lace trim, and I have not yet picked out what my trim will be, so it'll be a surprise to both of us, I guess, later on in the video. So um, I am gonna be cutting out my size 16. Uh, once I get the pattern open, I'll see if there's anything I need to adjust. I have not opened it up yet, so let's get started. Okay, so there is one thing I'm going to do, and um, it's going to be so easy. On patterns like this that have this little seam that go under the chest, um, you know, because me, age, gravity, everything, my chest is lower. So that always is like, almost like, how do you say, like giving you a wedgie in your boobs. You know what I mean? Where it's too high. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to need to adjust this piece number one, which is the bodice front and my front facing. But not really adjust, just cut it differently. Because what I wanna do is add at least an inch, okay? And so when I get my ruler, which is up here somewhere, and measure the distance of one inch, well, one inch is just a little bit less than the size 24 cut line, okay? So I'm cutting out 16, one inch is like right there. So what I'm gonna do is at the top of the straps, cut it out for the size 24 cut line. Okay, now this whole part here is gathered. So if I wanted to incorporate any extra width for a full bust adjustment there, all I have to do is cut out a wider side size because it's all gonna be gathered together anyway. So it doesn't, you know, it's not really critical about making it match. Now, um, I'm not gonna cut out the width for size 24, but I might cut out the width for size 18, you know? So the sleeve that I'm cutting out too, this one, is a big circular piece. And because of that, having an extra half inch right here, I don't think is gonna make a difference. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do is on the side here, cut out the size 18, which once you add the front half an inch, the back I am not changing at all, okay? The back is gonna stay the same. So half inch here, half inch there, it's just gonna add one inch in width, but I'm also gonna add one inch in height here. So I'm just gonna cut it out up here and then for the armhole, I am just going to kind of merge the two. So starting out here on 18, and then I'm gonna kind of split the difference and cut my pattern piece about halfway between a 16 and 18. Hang on a second here, and take it all the way up, all right? So that's what it looks like there in the curve, okay? Just kind of in between those two. 
and then I coming straight up to the top. And with it all the way up to that top piece, since I'm cutting this one at the 24 also, these pieces are going to match. Okay, so that's it. Very easy. Very, very easy. Okay, so with everything cut out, again, it is the next day here. Um, I'm going to be working on the front first in this top bodice piece here. So, like usual, the first thing I'm going to do is come in here and clip my notches. And on this, even though I kind of cut out different sizes and everything, I'm going to clip my notches based on my original size 16. And the same here, clip this notch based on the original size 16 and ease where I may. There is a dot right here that is part of the sleeve placement. So I'm going to, as usual, get my little piece of leather, stick it under the tissue paper and with my hole punch, punch out that circle and oops, I have my right sides on the outside. So I'm going to need to flip that. But basically I just put my little pin through, color in the circle, easy peasy. Okay, there's also another little dot up here in the corner, which is marking center front. So on a fabric with a design this busy, I'm drawing actually a little bullseye around my dot just to make it easier to find. So I'm going to do that up here too. Now this is a cotton fabric. It's been pre-washed and everything, but I'm going to serge all the way around the edges, trying not to cut much of anything off, just going around the edges with the serger to keep it from fraying. So once I have this side marked, I'm going to go ahead and serge around these pieces. Now before I actually do the serging, there is some stay stitching that has to happen. And the stay stitching, it's just a line of straight stitching um, that's going to go right here along this front opening because it is cut on a bias, you know, on a diagonal. And so that means it can stretch. I don't want to stretch it to show you, but it can stretch. And we don't want that because if this stretches out of shape, you end up with a really gapy neckline right here, which, you know, we can fix, but why have to go there? So up here, I'm just going to add a half inch seam allowance. This is before I serge it. I'm going to run one straight stitch from this point all the way up. Okay, just a straight stitch. Then down here at the bottom, I need to run gathering stitches. So where these two notches are, I'm going to be running two rows of gathering stitches along the bottom here. I will do one at a half inch and one at about a quarter inch. Okay, be right back. I wanted to show you today for this project, I am going to be using Bell. I like to just cycle through my machine so no one gets left out and froze up over the time, you know? So she is just a little mid-century Japanese made Singer clone, a uh, Singer 15 clone. When the Singer 15 patent wore off, these things were like made by all different companies, but it's very, very well made. So just because it's a clone doesn't mean it's inferior. It's great. So um, yeah, it's a 15 clone so I can use my same 15 bobbins that I use in uh, my Meister and my regular 15 I can use in here. So this is her. She is going to be the belle of the hour. There you go. So at this point, I got it surged around the edges. And when I surge, <clears throat> excuse me, I try to position it so I don't cut much of anything off. Maybe a couple stray threads and that's all. My stay stitching is just a typical stitch length, but my gathering down here is the widest possible stitch length. So I got my two rows down here. Now I just need to set these two pieces aside for a minute and grab my two lower bodice front pieces. One is a front front and one is a side front. So just like before, I'm going to clip my notches. I'm going to color in my little dots. I got little dots here. Um, there's actually going to be little loops. It's going to be really cute with little loops here. Um, but you know what? I'm actually going to hold off putting these dots on until it's time to put the loops on. I think that that will make my life easier. 
So <clears throat> this is the side front. This outside edge here is the hip side. This side over here, the taller side, is the one that joins over here. So it's going to be like that. So I am going to serge around both of these pieces, okay, before I join them together. So let me get them all prepared, uh, notched, and serged, and I will be right back. Okay, welcome back. It is late, late in the day here. And so at this point, Got my little front and side front pieces surged together. And so I'm going to go ahead and sew them together now. Matching these two up. Um, there should be two notches in here and two notches in here. I will match those up in just a moment. Once I get them matched up carefully, sew it at 5 eighths of an inch and press that seam allowance open. Okay, so now that I have these pieces sewed together here, what they want you to do is come back and run a row of stay stitching along this area right here. So again, that's at half an inch seam allowance and just a regular length straight stitch just to keep this from stretching out of shape. All right, so now that I have my little row of stay stitching stitched on there, you know, seam allowance is nice and open, I need to sew this on. So first I'm going to be matching up my center front down below here with my front of my bodice which is the side that we stay stitched here. So on the top part, um, remember there was gathering stitches put in the middle but it was flat on the sides. So I'm basically pinning these two sides flat here, all of this gathering is pooching out there and mine might be slightly different because remember I cut one size larger just on the side over here. So I'm honestly not paying too close attention to where all of the notches are just because mine might be a slightly off, okay? But I'm going to get my bobbin threads which are on the right side of the fabric here and give those a tug just to cinch up all of this in the middle so until it's nice and flat and evenly gathered. All right, so now that I have my bobbins pulled up, you can see it's a decent amount of gathers that's gonna be right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin this down and stitch it at 5 eighths of an inch. I wanna try to make sure that even though I'm looking at this side to make sure my gathers don't mess up, that um, I'm keeping this seam allowance pressed open down here underneath. Since I surged it open, it should want to stay that way. So just to make it easier on me, I'm actually going to go ahead and press this before I sew it, but what I'll be doing is pressing it. Stitch it at 5 eighths of an inch, and then after that, the entire seam allowance gets pressed down like that. Okay, so looking at the instructions, once we have our seam allowance pressed down, that's when we need to go ahead and put the trim across this front piece. So we shall. This is what it's looking like right now. Let me raise you up. It's actually kind of cute. Um, this is fitted down here, kind of corset-ish, and then all my gathers. I know my fabric is very busy, but take my word for it. So, like I said, this does have some elasticy stretch to it. I am going to sew it just below the stitching line. So let me raise this. When I put my center of my trim, I'm going to center it, you know, right about here. Pin it on nicely. Uh, I need to change the thread out on my machine to a darker color thread and try very carefully just to sew straight down the middle of it. I'm going to leave these two edges kind of loose, you know, because why not? So I believe now I need to get started working on the little loops and this whole little front area right here. So there is a piece number six that I need to go grab. Looks like you were only supposed to cut one of these out. I cut out two just because I was kind of on a roll at that point. So. One will be the bonus piece, I suppose. But what I need to do is fold these wrong sides together. Let me move this out of the way so we can see better here. Fold this long piece wrong sides together like this. 
and then so this side here and this side here and it looks like that is a 5 8 inch seam allowance it's not a small one so this is it at 5 8 and so is this and then turn it right side out and press it so I actually am going to trim some of this extra off here before I flip it just you know to get rid of the extra bulk and flip this right side out and down here I'm going to cut some of that out too to get out the extra bulk so it looks like this and I'm going to go press it so the edges are nice and straight um, once I get the edges pressed I am going to go ahead and serge just straight across this edge just to keep it looking nice all right, so I've got my little piece here and I need to match the top of it to the little top of the seam area that I sewed this on top of. So I'm just gonna kinda eyeball it right there and pin this outside edge. And of course, we only do this on one side. Okay, so I've got it over here. This side does not get one. And it is your little front piece is slightly shorter than the blouse. That's okay. That's so that you have time or enough space to make a little tiny rolled hem on the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to sew this here straight down, I believe, at 5 eighths of an inch. Does not say. It does not say. So we are going to sew this at 5 eighths of an inch because that's the standard seam allowance um, just all the way down here. So now that I have this sewn, I'm just going to come back in here and trim off the excess of my funky little trim because this seam is going to hold it. And I actually just kept sewing over so I locked the top part of my little lace trim stuff down too. So then this is going to be able to be on the underside. So when the loop closure over the buttons is going on right here, no skin is showing. That's what this is. It's like a little privacy strip. This side does not get that treatment done onto it. When I sew the facing on, that's when I'm going to trim this over on this side. So let me go get the big, long, bias cut strip that is going to be our loops. Okay, so I've got this little strip. It's only like one inch wide, cut on a bias, and having flashbacks, it's, we're going to make a spaghetti strap out of it, you know? Wish me luck. So, what we're going to do is fold it in half, right sides together, and sew in, what is it, quilter lingo, a scant quarter inch, a very, very small seam allowance, but enough to hold it securely all the way down the side of it, okay? Let me go over to my machine and see what I can do. Okay, I'm gonna be using my 1980s vintage spaghetti scrap, strap turner and I have broken the handle off so I just have a button at the bottom. So it's basically a brass tube with a stopper down here, a wire in the middle with a little sharp curly cue of a wire that sticks out, okay? So I'm gonna pull that wire inside so it does not get snagged and try to feed this entire thing over my little tube and then when I have just a little bit sticking out like here's the end of my tube about half an inch or so or less I stick my wire up with its very sharp twisty end here and turn it around until it comes through and then feed it back inside while I simultaneously pull the button handle and hope for the best that it doesn't pull out of thread, you know? So hang on a sec. Getting it started sometimes is the hardest part. Yeah, and it already went through. Okay. I'm sticking it through a little bit lower this time. I'm sticking it through, before it was about a quarter inch, I'm sticking it through about three eighths of an inch down. So let's see what I can do here. I'm gonna, ah, it did it again. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I hate spaghetti straps. They're the only one in the world, but we can do this, we can do it. Okay, so I've got my little twisty curl through. 
and I need to pull it straight down without twisting it. Yeah, I'm going to clip some of this off here, see if that will help. So here's the deal. I'm pulling down here and it should feed through the tube up at the top. I can push somewhere up, pull down here. As soon as I get it where I can see some fabric coming through the bottom, we are home free. And there it is. Yay. Okay, so now I can just grab the fabric and pull. So there we go. This little top that I had that wire going through is a little bit bedraggled, so that might be a loss. But I've got the rest of this. It's like, you know like that. It's not super, super narrow, but it's enough to go around a nice fat button. So actually I need to go pick out some buttons to go with this. How many do I need? I need mm, eight buttons. Nope, I read that wrong. I need seven buttons. And they're asking for three eighth inch buttons, so I'll try to find something in that similar size range. Alrighty, so the buttons that I'm going to be using are these. They are um, vintage, of course, shank button. I thought that a shank button might be good with this thick loop to go behind it. And they're about the right size, so that's good. So what did the instructions say to do next is to take your big spaghetti turned loop here and cut them into two and a half inch long pieces. I did have some extra because they give you enough to make eight in case you're doing the view that needs eight. So what I need to do now is fold these in half. It says bringing the inner edge together like they want you to make sure that that seam allowance is on the inside. I don't think I'm going to do that. But I need to fold it in half like this and it says hand tack the inner edges together within the seam allowance. Well, that's what they say. I can tell you what I'm going to do. Hold on just one second. So I know that the um, instructions say they want you to stitch each of these by hand. Um, I just don't feel like it. So what I'm doing is just folding it. So my raw ends are over here, tucking it so that about a quarter inch of it sticks out and back stitching over the center of them and going on. So I have all seven of my little ladies there stitched together so I just need to clip it in between and now I can go ahead and place them where those dots are on along my front which I did not transfer over so I need to get those little dots transferred over so I have a place to put these guys. Good morning welcome to the next day. So I slept on this last night and decided I don't like this trim. It's too heavy, you know? Yes, it's big, bold, and exciting, but it's too heavy. So humor me for a moment while I kind of pick all of this off. And over here, I'm going to do my best to remove it very carefully from around here. I may have to open this little seam and pull it off, but now is the time to change it. All right, so I've just changed my mind one more time, and I promise this is the last time. I was going to go over to my lace box and just grab something that was already off-white, and I remembered I had this leftover gimp. This was from um, the Chanel suit that I made, and so I am going to use the gimp. Now the thing with this is it's kind of a directional thing. You know, it's like little ram's heads kind of curls. So I need to make sure that they're both heading the same direction. So I'll have one going this way, one coming this way and all. But I think this is going to work. And I can, when I stitch it on, I know from experience that I can just run a straight stitch straight up the middle and that's going to hold it on really nicely. So I like that. I think it's brighter and cheerful, less, you know, thick and everything. So I am going to go ahead and cut two of these and stitch them back onto these front pieces and just set the rest aside for that front band. Okay, so I actually went ahead and threaded up my 201 with thread that will work for stitching this because I got tired of re-threading them one machine with red and then with gray and then with black and then with white. So now I have two machines going, which is fun. Hello Midna, and I am not going to be cutting off the ends um, until I have a seam that's going to be sewn here that's going to kind of contain it, you know? Oh my gosh, really? Here, let me show you. 
Nina, say hi. Hi. This is Treble. She's the one that sheds everywhere. She believes the sewing room is hers and I am the intruder. So yeah, we love her anyway, but she's quite the personality. Okay, so now that I have this on, what I'm gonna do is get my little loops back over here. And I still have my dots that I drew on before. And I'm going to match up the edge of my cut edges of my loops with where my surging is. You know, it's gonna be just a little bit in. I'm not really a fan of these loops. I tell you, not really a fan. Part of me wants to grab some elastic and everything, but I'm just going to go with it right now. But I'm just going to match them up like this because at 5 8, which should be right about here, if I take my button, I should be able to push it through. Okay, so test it out with your button. Make sure it'll work at whatever depth you're placing it. That's what I am doing. So I'm just going to Pin them all on first at that position and then just come back with a straight stitch at 5 8 7 inch and just run a row stitching across all the loops to hold them on. Okay, so I've got my little loops sewed on. They'll look like that. So at this point, I straight stitched all the way over here. So I'm going to go ahead and clip my gimp. Okay, so now I have my back piece here and you can see that I am marking my dart. There is a big long dart here. So again, putting my piece of scrap leather under, punching out the circles that go along with my size. I will then mark it on the wrong side with my heat erasable pen, clip my notches and surge around the entire piece before I even start making this dart right here. Okay, so I've actually got it surged and I'm marking it now and um, this little dot for sleeve placement is right on a black circle so I had to mark it with a white chalk and uh, circle it because otherwise it'll be too difficult to find. So again, marking my little dart placement down here and what I do is connect them. I'm going to circle them so I can find them pretty easy because man they disappear. So I'm going to just kind of play dot to dot here. There that is. And draw my lines from dot to dot so I have a very good idea of where my stitching line needs to be when I am sewing my dart. So, so now that I have that what I need to do is find my pens that I keep burying on my table and go ahead and pin up my dart. So I'm going to start in the middle, put my little pin down on the first dot, come back up in the second dot, that line, come on. All right, so that I can push that through. And while I'm pushing this through, I can pinch down here where that lower dot is, find out where that crease is. Stick a little pin down here. I'm going to put one at the midpoint and tuck this little guy in and then come up to the top dart or the top point of that dart and press it closed. So I have this little crease line go in there and pin it up here at the top and one about midway. Since I'm using a nice stable cotton fabric, I'm just going to sew it all in one big swoop. Start up here at the top and following my lines that I drew, come all the way down to the bottom here. And I'm going to do that on uh, both of the darts on the back. Okay, so here is my back now. I've got my darts sewn in. They are pressed towards the center. And as soon as I iron them, of course, all of my marks disappear, which is what I want here. So I'm going to lay it face up on my table and it's time to go ahead and sew the fronts to the back. So let me work on this side here first and that is the wrong piece. Get this piece over here. 
this side should match up and this shoulder seam up here should match up even though this is slightly longer because of my adjustment doesn't matter this should still match okay so I'm going to sew up here and here at 5 8 7 inch and then when I'm done press the seam allowance open so I'm going to do it for both of my front sides all right, so I just pinned her up here on my dress form, just kind of matching that center front so we can get an idea of how it's going to lay. I can tell you I'm very, very happy that I added that extra inch up here because now I can see that it's this line here is going to land where it's supposed to. If I hadn't done that, it would have been up a little too high. And that's always kind of uncomfortable, you know, makes you very self-conscious when it's too high. So anyway, the back fits. I can tell you that there is not a huge amount of ease around the hips. It's enough that it's gonna kind of skim, but not be like, you know, too, too blousey like this. So yeah, this is good. I'm gonna let this sit here for a minute so I can get the facing put together now. So this is the interfacing I'm gonna be using. It's my typical extremely lightweight interfacing. And there is a long, long front piece that, remember, I cut extra long here. And there is a back neck facing that is cut on the fold. I'm going to cut um, enough. What am I going to do? I'm going to cut two of these, one of these on the fold, and get these fused into place before I transfer over any markings. Okay, so now that I have my facing pieces, all fused on here. Um, actually, when I iron, because I iron my fabric first and then fuse the interfacing on it, and I hadn't ironed my fabric first, so it kind of stuck out. So these pieces were about an eighth of an inch too long on each side. Well, once I fused it on, I just laid my pattern back on and trimmed it to the actual size. So if you're ever doing that in your fabric stretches, that's what it is. So um, this little dot right here is going to match up with that very center front dot where everything comes together and then heads out in a V. Um, but other than that dot and this notch, that front hole part is pretty open. This up here is the front area, okay? This up here is the shoulder. So I want to make sure I keep that straight. So I'm going to be sewing my facing together. And once I have it sewed together, then I'm going to serge it. But I want to get this seam in first. So I'm going to go ahead and match my back facing to my front facing at the shoulders. Sew these at 5, 8, 7 inch and then press them open. So here is my little seam pressed open up there. And uh, what they're going to want you to do is come along the whole outside edge. Just barely turn it under and do a straight stitch along that edge just to give this a nice finish all the way around. Usually I, I just serge it, but I feel like following the rules today for some reason, at least this part. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm um, not sure which machine. I think I might use my 201 so it'll have a white thread. So that's rebellious, you know, but I'm going to go ahead and finish off my facing that way. Alrighty, got it sewed and I got to tell you, I did that thing where I sewed about this much of it, finished the rest and realized I had run out of bobbin at this point. So I had to come back and do the rest, but you know, we survive, so I'm going to go ahead and match this up. Let me get my shoulders of my blouse here so this can kind of make sense on the camera here. So these are my shoulder seams right here, and I'm just going to match up the seams of my facing so that they line up with those shoulder seams. Once again, hunting for my pens. Seriously. Where did they go? Oh my gosh, it's like some little goblin comes in and takes my pins. Hang on a second. Did you see that? Look, there they are. I think I need to paint the whole tin thing, fuchsia pink or safety orange or something. Oh, by the way, what my pin holder is, is I have these massive industrial magnets I got years ago when I had a horseshoe supply store, which is, you know, another story for another day. 
but I sold these big old honking magnets because they were good for picking up, you know, stray horseshoe nails and stuff. So I had some leftover. Fabulous for um, pins because it's super, super strong, you know. But, um, yeah, that's what's in there. And then it's just sitting in a candle lid because that's how I'm rolling right now. So I'm just going to line this up match up my shoulder seams, match up my center back, match up this little point here in the very front with the little point on my facing. You can kind of see where all of that is supposed to come together and make sure that the very bottom is going to line up. And then everything else, I'm just going to kind of make it work. If one side is slightly larger than the other, I can kind of ease it. But you can see it looks like it's going to line up pretty darn perfectly. So let me finish pinning all of this. Once I get it pinned, I'm going to come back and sew this seam here at 5 8 7 inch. I want to show you on the bottom of the facing that has this little strip, this little, you know, what do we call that? Modesty strip. Um, when you are sewing the facing on, you can kind of feel where it is, but at about a quarter inch, I'm going to be cutting over, which is below where it is here. Okay. I want to, I want to sew this just underneath that. I don't want to catch it and then come up here at the five eighths. Okay. So that that way, when I go to turn this right side out, that little, little modesty strip piece guide whatever can just um, pop out and not be tucked into the fab into the uh, seam right here so okay with that said i'm going to also on the other side come back in so it looks like i have it marked actually closer to about three eighths of an inch up here so i will be doing the same thing over here on this side you know coming down five eighths here and then turning and coming over at about three eighths right there okay and that's gonna give me a nice start for my bottom hem okay so now that that is sewed I'm going to trim these corners down to get some excessive bulk out this gimp piece I am just clipping I have it sewed twice and I don't think it's gonna unravel so I think that it's going to be fine because it is stitched twice, once here and once here. And I don't think if it unravels at all, it'll just be on the outside edge. So that's how I'm going to be dealing with all of them, actually. Got a little piece of tape there I'm going to take off. And then I need to clip where this corner area is. I'm just going to make two of them so I have some flex right there because if I do it straight at the corner I got a lot of stuff going on there and that would be difficult. Up here I'm going to make several little clips all around the neckline of the back because that's where most of this curve is. I'm not going to worry too much about grading this because for the most part, it's just two layers of calico with some interfacing. You know, it's only when you get down to the very front area that it, it gets a bit thick. So anyhow, this part I'm trimming out again, the, the gimpy part, but the rest of it, I'm just going to kind of live as is. So when I open it up, you can see ta -da, there are all of my thread loops, or I should say spaghetti strap loops. So let me finish trimming this up. Now the instructions do say to understitch, which I'm very happy about. So basically starting down here in this corner with the seam allowances out, I'm just pulling the facing over it. Okay. And I'm going to start as far into this little pocket as I can. I'll probably be like an inch and a half out and start stitching right here about an an eighth of an inch in or so. Here's my seam and I'm going to be stitching it like that all the way around just kind of opening my seam allowance. I mean sorry opening my facing. Stitching on top of the seam allowance all the way around because I made those little um, notches into the back of the neck facing. I should be able to open this up really well. Go all the way around 
until you get down here to the bottom of this side. And again, just go as far as you can. You know, I'll probably be stopping right about here. All right, so now that that is done, you can kind of see my understitching there. That's going to make the edge so much nicer, cleaner, easier to turn, and everything like that. So the understitching pulls all of this stuff to the bottom, to the hidden part so that on the outside you don't see any seams, you don't see that edge or anything because it's all safely hidden on the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and press this. I'm going to turn these bottom corners out, you know, poke those out and press them. Press all the way around the neckline and I will be right back. Okay, so it's looking kind of fun right now. I'm liking it. Um, what I need to do though is up here where I just have the facing turned under at the shoulder seam. I'm gonna, uh, with a needle and thread, come back right now and just, you know, do a little whip stitch to tack it to this seam allowance just to keep it from wanting to pop open. So I'm gonna do that on both of these uh, shoulder seams. Alrighty, so with that done, before I move on to sleeves, I'm just gonna quickly finish this hem down here on the bottom. And so you can see because it, got caught into the facing here. I've already got it started. It's just going to be a very, very narrow hem. So basically I'm just going to turn it under, turn it under. It's going to be probably, you know, about an eighth of an inch, between an eighth and a quarter inch. And I'm just going to stitch that by machine all the way across the bottom. Just kind of turn it under as I go. When I get to these points that have the seam allowance, just to make my life a little bit easier. These are the wrong scissors, but I'm just clipping off some of that bottom corner of these seam allowances, and that's gonna make it a lot easier for me to make that tiny little fold over like that. So straight stitch all the way across, and I will be right back. Okay, so that is what my little hem looks like all along the inside, which I think is lovely. And I'm thinking that I'm going to go ahead and put my buttons on right now because I feel like it. So I'm just matching up the bottom down here where these two points are going to meet. And I'm going to get my heat erasable pen and come all the way out to the farthest point of my little loop and make a circle. Okay so that my loop is stretched out as far as it's gonna go. And that is where I'm going to sew the shank of my button on. If I can find it, this one is being interesting. Okay, and then up here at the very top, of course I cannot really draw very well on here, so I'm just gonna stick a little straight pin into the gimp where I need to sew my button, which is gonna be right here. Okay, so let me go ahead and get my little shank buttons and start sewing them on. All right, so I have the buttons sewn on. Before I show it to you on my dress form, I just wanted you to see that it's quite the little plungy neckline. You know, we got a little clevin showing right there. And at first I was thinking, oh, I'm going to put a big modesty panel across the top. But honestly, I'm feeling quite rebellious this morning and I'm thinking I'm just going to leave it as is because um, why not? At this point, you know, it's kind of a sleety, kind of cold and wet day outside, so I'm definitely not wearing it outside right now. But when it's a warm day, you never know, I might. And if I'm wearing it and it does feel like it's too plungy, there's nothing that says I can't put a little tank top or camisole or something on underneath it. So there you go. That's going to be my solution. But let me tip the camera up to the dress form and show you what she looks like. All right. So here she is. And I just kind of have my trim just draped over the shoulder because I wanted to see what it would look like. So here is this side with the trim, that side without it. I'm kind of thinking that I'm going to go without it. I think that, <clears throat> excuse me, that this is enough for me, you know, for this fabric and for my desires and everything for it. So I'm just going to set this aside for now. But you can see here are my buttons. You know, it's being buttoned up. It's holding its own there. 
The back is, even though it has darts, it is fairly straight. They're very narrow darts. But yeah, so here's, here's where you can see what I mean, where it's going to be coming quite low, quite plungy in the front. Depending on my mood, we'll see how I wear it. But now I'm going to go ahead and get started on the sleeves. Okay, so just a reminder, I am doing this sleeve here, which is a very circular kind of sleeve, which is this one. And out of curiosity, I folded it in half to see what the difference is, and the front is exactly the same as the back. So it's going to be no stress about making sure the front goes on the front, and the back on the back, and all of that kind of stuff. But the first thing I am going to do Take it off the tissue paper and serge around each one of these pieces. Okay, so I am going to take what's going to look like a crazy shortcut because the front and the back are exactly the same. Okay, so basically I am just going to match up my side seams, sew them at 5 8 press this open right here, okay, and just assume this halfway point here is going to line up with my shoulder seam. So I'll make a mark there. Now we are going to need to make some gathering stitches, but if I put my pattern again, fold it in half, my notch is exactly the same on one side as the other, so you know, there's that fun. So I'm going to go ahead and clip that notch because once I get this side seam done, I'm going to need to run gathering stitches between these two notches. Okay, so I've got that seam sewed, pressed open, and before I actually put in those gathering stitches between my notches, I am going to go ahead and hem the whole bottom edge. And I'm going to be doing it the same way that I hemmed the bottom of the blouse, where I just make that tiny little hem. Oops, wrong scissors, I know. But what I'm going to be doing is, you know, clipping the corners of my seam allowance, just basically turning it up about an eighth of an inch where my serging is and then up one more time. So I have a tiny little hem. Well here, if I think if I do it over here, you can see better. It looks about like that. I'm just going to run a straight stitch straight across it. By serging it first and having a guideline like that and a reinforcement like that, it makes it a lot easier going around these very curved sleeves. So the hem is now in and I went ahead and ironed it so that the edge would, you know, flatten out. Sometimes when you're working on a curved edge, it looks a little wobbly. So now it's nice and neat. And I also made a crease up here where that shoulder seam should be matching. So it is time to put in gathering stitches. I have my little notches on either side. I'm going to be running two rows of gathering stitches. The first one at about a half inch seam allowance, the second one about a quarter inch seam allowance. Alrighty, so with my gathering stitches in, and like I said before, how the sleeve is the same front and back, I'm just going to pick a random sleeve and a random side of my bodice and match these two. Hang on, let me get these threads out of the way. Match these two underarm seams together so that those two match. Let me stick a couple pins here and then go up and match that shoulder seam with my little pressed crease that I have here, which is right there. And I'm actually going to pin it, um, trying to make sure that I keep my seam allowance is pressed down because I want that to make to be nice and neat and then get these gathering threads again out of the way I'm just going to pin it straight up to where those notches meet and from that point on pulling these gathering threads so that it matches but you know what there's no need for that there is absolutely no need for that um, Look, you can kind of see when I was putting in my gathering threads, it, it actually started to gather it just a bit. So let me sort that out. But look, because I added that little bit to the front, it's a little bit tighter in the front. I don't think that we're going to need to gather this thing. I think that that might have been extra. So let me, I'm holding it at the bottom right here. Okay. Holding it at the top, finding the top two places right here. 
and I can tell you that I'm going to need to ease a little bit of the bodice into my blouse because for some reason my sleeve is shorter than my um, my sleeve armhole is smaller than my blouse armhole. I was thinking that since there was gathering stitches in there, I'd have plenty of room when I added that extra inch. Apparently, you're, you don't really need to gather it. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna ease it in. And this is how I ease. So I have this point up here on the shoulder, this point down here at the notch, okay? This is where I'm gonna kinda just fold it in half, all right? When I fold it in half, I'm gonna take these two points that are the farthest and pin those together, making sure that the edges are even, okay? And then at that halfway point, I'm gonna do it again. Fold it in half, okay? Making sure that the edges are even and putting in a pin. It is easing, but it's not so much that it's gonna look puckery, you know, especially with a, a fabric this, this thin. So what I would say is don't worry about those gathering stitches because, um, yeah, wow, I don't even see the reason for that at this point. So when I sew this in, what I'm gonna be doing, because I have extra room up here on my bodice side, less on my sleeve side, this is, you know, unusual but it's happening here so what that means is when I sew it I'm going to sew it face down this way with the feed dogs up against this side okay so they're moving this way the sleeve side is what I am looking at and that way the feed dogs can work in that little bit of ease between each pin again it's not a lot but that's how I'm going to sew it so let me finish pinning these together and I will show you what I mean all right, so I've got my sleeves sewn on, and I hope you can see, even though I did a lot of easing, I really don't have any puckerings, you know? It just, it worked itself in. But I was, when I cut this whole thing out, assuming that there would be gathers in that sleeve. There was not. So if you are gonna make this, and you are going to extend that front so you can have a, you know, lower, more mature bust, as we shall say. What I would do is however much you add to that top piece, like on this, I added just over an inch from this cut line to where I added to, okay? Since there is really no gathers to be mentioned, take half of that amount and add it to each side, all right? So since I'm adding an inch up there, what I would do is add half an inch here and half an inch here. It's going to center it out. That's going to be the easiest thing, you know, so maybe cut your front out first and then when you get to your back, you know, just find a measuring point that's about half of whatever you're adding onto each onto each cut line on the side. That would be the easiest thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop it on the dress form and see what it looks like. Cause right now it is too cold and rainy outside to try it on, maybe tomorrow. Here we are. I actually waited a couple days because I wanted to go outside and film this, but it has been snowing off and on and so cold that, you know, I think I jumped the gun on the warm weather spring type thing. But 
Let me give you my opinion. First of all, these sleeves, extremely comfortable. I highly recommend this sleeve option because, yeah, you can move everywhere, which is nice. And this, extremely low. At first, I was going to try it on. Oops, I'm bumping my microphone. At first, I was going to try it on without the little undershirt, you know, just going for the rebelliousness of it. And it was so low. I mean, granted, I added, you know, an inch here, which I needed to. Otherwise, this line would be an inch higher, and, you know, that wouldn't, wouldn't do. But this comes way down, like, to that bottom level of my bra right here. So I had extreme cleavage going on, you know? And if it was a nighttime cocktail, who knows what kind of evening that I don't participate in anyway here on the farm, maybe, maybe for that kind of a, a look, but um, it was just too uncomfortable. Now with the little tank top on underneath, yeah, you know, bending over and everything is fine. And it's cute. I like this little button closure here. You know, try, I'm on my tiptoes here trying to show you. I like that. I think it's cute. Buttons up really well. I like the amount of trim I put onto it. Um, so, you know, there you go. Make your own choice. I like the blouse, but I will always wear something underneath it just because it's too low. And there's not an easy way to raise this neckline because it's at this place where all of these different seams and everything come together. So, is what it is. Um, where I had to do some easing to get my sleeve in, you would never know. It's, it's fine, you know. Uh, but that little thing I said that if you are going to be dropping the front some because, you know, age and gravity and stuff, if you wanted to not have to deal with the easing, just make your sleeve piece of like half inch wider or whatever you're going to do on both sides. So, anyhow, fun little top. I hope you like it and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.